Thank you everyone for joining us today. My name is Alex Trujillo, Senior Sales Manager for Flyscope. And today I want to take you through our uh, Flyscope X3 with Fusion Tracking. So I'm going to take you through the setup, I'm going to take you through some of our applications, and then we'll take any questions you might have uh, throughout the session. Please give us a thumbs up if our sound is good uh, on the stream. We've, uh, we've worked through some of our, our studio stuff now. We have set up, so we should be good to go. Uh, I'm going to start off with the X3 and the VX app. And what I want to talk about um, as we start is just the setup. So many of you might be thinking about putting the X3 inside of your studio or in your garage. And I wanted to talk to those before we get started. So in our studio, what we have is what we call an indoor setup. We have about 14 to 15 feet of ball flight. And then we have 8 to 10 feet from the radar to the ball. We do have a, uh, an additional mode called short indoor mode, which allows you to go down to 16 feet of total space. So that would be eight feet of ball flight and then eight feet from radar to ball. So we're gonna go in the indoor uh, mode today. Um, I'm gonna take you through the application. We'll hit some shots and then I'll talk to you a little bit about the functionalities of the X3. So we're gonna go ahead and start with full swing and ball tracking. Now, uh, in the indoor mode, it is important that you have one metallic sticker on the golf ball. All of our golf balls here have one metallic sticker and we face them towards the target. Just for reference, in the outdoor mode, uh, you do not have to have a metallic sticker. So I got a seven iron here. I'm gonna hit a few shots and then we'll talk a little bit about the software. I'll get three up there so we have a grouping. So as you can see, it's real-time tracking. The moment I make contact with that ball, uh, that ball is in flight. All right, and we'll get one more going there. Let's maybe hit a little different shot shape here. Alrighty. So this is our VX application. This is the main application that most teachers and fitters use. Um, it has a lot of information. So we're going to go through some of those screens and kind of show you the capabilities. So down at the bottom of the screen, we have what's called the bottom bar. Um, there you will see all the data parameters that the X3 provides for full swing. Uh, so you can sort through those data parameters. You can also rearrange them. And then on the right hand side, you have five quick reference data parameters. So right now we have uh, carry distance selected, ball speed, club speed, and smash factor. So if I wanted to add an additional data parameter, we can go down, for example, let's add angle of attack. So we'll double click on angle of attack and it'll bring us right back uh, on, the, on the five data points on the right hand side. So this is what we call our 3D shot plotter, 3D trajectory screen. We're going to go up to the four squares, and we're going to go into the grouping screen. Now in the grouping screen, those are the three shots that I hit, and you can see um, what my grouping is for that club, that seven iron. So if I were to hit um, sand wedge through driver, you, got, you would see a different color chart for every club selected. And then here you can do your gapping sessions. You can see if you have any issues with your lofts. Maybe, maybe your lofts are too close or, or too far apart. Um, this is a good screen to see that. You also get standard deviation forward and lateral. We'll go up to the four squares and we're going to go into club analysis. Now in club analysis, you, you're going to have, um, it's going to show you the, the face and path in 3D and you can replay that so you can, you can have a good visual. So if you replay that, you can also move the screen around with your finger. So this is on an iPad. You can just take your finger and move the screen around and you can see um, how the club trajectory is going through the strike zone in three dimensions. We also have a feature uh, called D-plane. So up at the top right, we can click on D-plane and it's actually going to show us our D-plane in three dimensions. Uh, as we move it throughout the screen. So I can see, for example, my angle of attack, my face to target, face to path, even dynamic loft, uh, any of the parameters that I like to know about with the D-plane. We'll go back 
Uh, we'll click D plane once again. And now we're going to go into our 2D screens. Now the 2D screens are just going to show you a different perspective. The first screen we have will show you face to target. It'll show you club path and then your horizontal launch angle. We can swipe the screen to the left. Now we have dynamic loft. We have la vertical launch angle and then your angle of attack. We'll swipe one more time to the left. You'll have your spin and spin axis. So this shows you basically uh, what are the wings of the golf ball doing on this particular trajectory. So this shot that I hit here was a little a draw. My spin axis was 10 degrees left. So uh, in theory, we can say that the, the wings of the golf ball were banked 10 degrees, which is what created that curvature. We'll swipe one more time and now we have the speed profile. Now these profiles that I'm going to show you next, speed and acceleration profiles, are used um, by many fitters in the country. Um, a lot of our tour players um, use these screens, especially when they're looking to change out any shafts. Uh, and what you see in the speed profile is a graph that is miles per hour over dis or, or I'm sorry, over distance of the radar. So this middle line that you see on the screen is what we call impact. Then you're going to see some negative numbers, so like negative one, two, three, four, five. So what this graph is showing you is showing you at about negative three, which would be, let's call it what we call zero Doppler right here about hip height, from about three feet before impact, we capture the club head coming into the strike zone, and we can see that my club head was gaining speed towards impact. I have a little bit of a, uh, let's call it, disturbance right before impact. And that could be anything, um, I could be casting the club, uh, the shaft might be too soft for me, uh, many reasons. But this is just showing you uh, what, those, what the club head is doing through that strike zone. If I select all, it's going to show me all three shots that I hit, all three profiles on the speed side. So we're going to swipe over now to the right hand to the next screen, which is acceleration profile. Now the reason why I didn't really mention anything on the, on the positive side of the graph is because the, the ball has already been hit. This is just showing you that the radar, the X3, is still actively tracking that club head even once the ball has left. So it's just uh, a, a good to know. Now on the acceleration profiles, the graph changes a little bit. We go instead of speed, now we go into acceleration and g-forces. And you can see that the, the profiles are drawn on a downward scale. Now, there's positive numbers and negative numbers on this left-hand side. As long as my profile is in the positive side, I'm not, I'm not losing acceleration, it's just that the rate of acceleration is not the same. So uh, a good example of that would be when an airplane is taking off, um, you're at maximum acceleration but very low speed. And then when you're in air, you're at basically zero acceleration but a very high constant speed. So just a little, uh, little information on, on how these graphs are working. Now, what fitters are looking for is the shape of this graph. So on this particular shot that's highlighted, you have the, the shape of what we call a fish hook. And that can mean that one, the shaft is maybe a little too soft for me, so I, it's, it's kind of kicking a little too much. Uh, it could also mean that I'm casting the club. So maybe, you know, if I, if, let's say if I were to take a, a super stiff shaft and I were to swing it and my mechanics were perfect um, and I started to swing that really stiff, really heavy shaft, I might actually, that profile might go the other way, it might get into the negative side, meaning that I've actually lost acceleration. So. These, pro, these screens are pretty detailed. We do have a lot of training on them um, that will be uh, on our e-learning e platform. But these screens are very good for fitters and they're used throughout um, the world for that. So we're going to go back into the four squares. We have a, a section for focus analysis. That's for those of you who have focus band. We do have an integration with them. You can see that through the focus analysis screen. We're going to go down the 2D trajectory. Now in the 2D trajectory, you're going to see the trajectory from the side and from above. You can see one trajectory, you can see all of them. So if I select all, now you're going to see all, all three trajectories. Now something that's pretty interesting about the VX software, which personally is, one of, is, is my favorite software, it just has a lot of capabilities. Um, is if I were to hit a shot now on this screen, you'll see that it's going to take me back. 
It's going to take me back to the trajectory screen. And then once it draws that out, it brings me back to the screen I was on. So you don't lose your place in the software, but you do get to see the ball in flight. So that's 2D trajectory. Now we're going to go back to the four squares. And we're going to go into our dashboard screen. Now this is another favorite for our tour players. Now this screen gives you the capability of having three data points or you can add all of them. So let's go ahead and remove some of these data points. So just double tap on the ones we want to remove. And as you can see it resizes and removes them. So let's go down maybe to three data parameters. And then now I can go down to the bottom bar and I can select what I want to add. So let's go ahead and add maybe three more. So we'll double click. And now we say, okay, well, I want to rearrange this order. I don't like the order that these are in. I can press and hold the, the particular data parameter, and I can move it to the position I want to have it. So it's very customizable. allows you to adjust it to what you want to see. You might be on the range, and maybe you're just worried about, you know, carry distance, launch angle, and maybe spin rate. You can just set that up. You set your iPad down. You hit your shots, and you would see that information on there. All right, let's go over now to back to the four squares and let's get into the table screen. Now the table screen is going to show you all of your shots with that particular club. So for example, if I were to now pick up a, let's say a six iron, I changed my club, I have five shots with my six iron, we would see under the detailed screen, we would see all the shots with the seven iron, we'd scroll down and see all the shots with the six iron. And you can scroll to the left or right to see all of the data parameters provided. On the bottom of that detail graph, you're going to see something called deviance and average for every single data parameter. So for example, if on my 7 iron, my average carry distance is 161.4 yards. My deviance is 7.9 yards. So that means, you know, I can hit it, you know, I could possibly hit it longer or shorter, which is a good to know. So you can actually, um, you know, you can take a screenshot or print some of these graphs out just for your players or for yourself to have as a reference point when you're on the golf course. If you wanted to just see a summary of each individual club with just averages, I would just click on my summary screen. And now I get the club that I hit, so my 7 iron, and then all my averages. So for example, my, my carry distance, my club head speed is 84 miles an hour on average. Uh, my club path is two degrees left on average. Um, my curve distance is 0.0. .0. Look at that. Um, my spin axis is 0.4. So as you can see, you can see all of your averages um, throughout the data points. All right, we're going to go back to the four squares. And then the last screen is video analysis. I'm going to hold on that screen. This capability, uh, this application does have the capabilities of doing video. However, we have two applications that allow you to take video which are a little more versatile. Um, one of them is called the FS Video App and the other one is called FS Golf. I'll take you through some of those uh, so you can see the videoing capabilities. So we're going to go back to 3D trajectory. And now we're going to talk about something that we've worked on really hard for almost three years with some of our tour players, Bryson in particular, which is called the Environmental Optimizer. Now, in the past, we've, we've always had this question about um, normalized data. So you, 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 let's say you're outdoors, you're hitting your shots, and you know, there's maybe a 10 or 15 mile an hour wind, and you want to see your data without the wind effect. Because in an outdoor mode, the radar is tracking, is physically tracking what the ball is doing in that environment. So with Bryson's help, we set out on this, on this quest to figure out how can we change our environment in the application without necessarily changing our physical location. And so Henry and myself visited him at Riviera during one of his practice rounds and we just kind of started the process of understanding what happens to the ball in different environments. Now because we can't get the aerodynamic, you know, the aerodynamics of a golf ball from a manufacturer that's proprietary to them, we basically had to backwards engineer everything. So we went to South Africa where our production happens and our engineers are at. And we, for 16 to 18 months, we, we, we plotted uh, weather stations in flight with a, a ball cannon that we built and we shot 
all kinds of, of shots uh, in these environments and we, we're basically able to build this environmental optimizer. So I want to take you through how that works. So what you'll notice is on the top left hand side of the screen there's a cloud with a red icon. Now the reason why it's red is because my iPad doesn't have cellular data. So I have to do one of two things. I have to connect to the internet and just pull down my local weather or I can go into it and just manually change my weather which is what I'm going to show you now. So I'm going to open up my EO, click on the cloud, click on the EO, click on the cloud and then click on the EO. Yep, there we go. Just click on the cloud so we get rid of the, uh, there we go. Alright, so we have we have seven points across the top. The first one we can adjust is our pressure. So go ahead and click pressure and we can see pressure, we can see this based on altitude or air pressure. Let's go to altitude which is a little bit easier to understand and let's say that I'm gonna go I want to play in Colorado next week. It's going to be 5,000 feet above sea level. Let's bump that up to 5,000. Now let's go to temperature, which is the next one over to the right. It's going to be 65 degrees. Probably a little colder, I'm guessing now in today's uh, weather patterns. And I'm going to be hitting into, let's say, maybe an elevated green. So I'm going to go plus 10. So you can adjust if you're hitting up or down into a certain um, target. So we'll go plus 10, humidity is 50 is fine with no wind. And let's just click on, let's click on the wind one more time to remove this screen. Okay, clo close out the, uh, okay there we go, just close out the, uh, the bar and reopen. Nope, not, there we go. And then reopen. All right, so what you're going to see here is you're going to see you're going to see two trajectories. Go ahead and switch it from trajectory to D-plane. All right, and then on the bottom bar, let's go ahead on the right-hand side, let's remove ball speed and club speed. And now let's bring in, for example, carry distance and spin axis. So we're going to bring in the data parameters that are adjusted by the EO. So as you can see now, on my carry distance, here in Orlando, I hit the ball 150 yards, 150.7. In Colorado, in those conditions, I would have actually hit it 156 yards. So this is a great tool to start understanding what's going to happen to the golf ball if you go into different environments. But let's say that I just wanted to see my data just normalized. So I can just click on normalized or norm. Okay, and then now I want to, let's go back, let's make it flat, so I don't want any up or down, so let's make that flat. So we'll go to zero, and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some wind. So let's add, uh, let's say maybe a uh, 10 mile an hour into wind. So you can change also the direction that the wind is affecting you. Maybe it's quartering off the left or coming from the right. You can change those directions and the speed. All right, just click back on the... Uh, on the temperature and so now you can see if in Orlando with these conditions if I'm hitting uh, into a 10 mile an hour wind it would go to 137 if I were to switch that now to 10 mile an hour downwind it would also show me that so you can start mapping how the wind is going to affect your ball flight so that is the environmental optimizer on the VX app only for the Flyscope X3 uh, what we'll do now is maybe just start taking a few questions I'm sure you guys have a few questions on there I'll answer some questions and then we'll move on to our next application. Okay, uh, the first one we have here is from Mike and the question is why is the tracking a yellow line and not including the red line too? I okay. The red line is actual flight and the yellow is calculated. Okay, so that's that's a great question. So the yellow line is at, is tracked, the red line is anything that that is measured or I'm sorry it's backwards. Yellow is what we measured and red is whatever is calculated. So because we're indoors the trajectory would be a little portion yellow and then the rest of it would be red. So we have a, a parameter setting in the settings called show measured data. You can turn that on or off. Uh, it's completely up to you. Sometimes if, if you're outdoors um, for example, if you're hitting on a range that maybe has a severe downslope, you can turn that on and actually see how far the radar is tracking before it cuts off the tracking and then it runs the ballistic model. So if you're, you know, if you're extremely elevated and your target's down here, 
the radar is going to measure to a flat horizon based on the horizon of the unit. And then from that point forward, it's all uh, a calculation. So great question. We'll take a couple more. Okay, another one here from Ruan is, what is the most important factor to add in on the VX app for the EO? So that, that is completely up to you. Um, what a lot of the players do on tour is they put in the exact weather f where they're located. So for example, if I had my cellular data on, it would pull from the local weather station and it would input everything that's w at my location. So maybe it's 70 degrees with a 10 mile an hour wind. Uh, it would input that in there for you. So what they do is they just, they put the wind at zero so they can actually see what the effect is. So they hit a shot and let's say it's a 10 mile an hour wind end Flyscope says it went 140 yards, but then the EO would have said, hey, without any wind and the, in these conditions, you, it would have went 150. So that's how they kind of map out their, you know, their progressions of the different data points in EO. Okay, question here from Phil. What is the difference in tracking slash measuring capabilities between the X3 and Nevo Plus? Okay, that's a great question. So the X3 is a fusion tracking radar. So we use um, uh, tracking radar with image processing and, and it tracks the entire trajectory until the ball lands or until the ball goes below the horizon of the unit. The Mevo Plus is a tracking or is a Doppler radar, but it is, it's a limited flight tracking radar. So it's, it's, a, it's a little bit smaller. I'll just show you guys here. Uh, for reference, uh, I'm going to have my colleague switch the screen so you can see kind of the size. So this is obviously is a bigger panel, um, can track a lot further, has more horsepower. The panel here is slightly smaller. So this tracks a pretty good portion of the flight and then a ballistic model is run after that. However, the Mevo Plus application in FS Golf does incorporate weather to take into account how far that ball is flying doesn't have EO, but it does take the weather into account. Great question. Okay, good question here from Alejandro. Is there, a diff is there any difference in the accuracy of data captured if I'm switching clubs and hitting them without selecting the corresponding club? Okay, that's a great question. Um, actually, a lot of people ask that. The radar the radar, the only thing the radar wants to know is the club type. So an iron head is different than a, than a driver or a wood and, and a wedge. So the radar just wants to know, are you hitting an iron, a wedge, or a driver? But if I, for example, if I grab my six iron, I have my seven here. If I grab my, um, let me grab my five and I don't, I don't change the club, everything's going to be the same. The only thing that's going to happen is that my my uh, groupings are not going to be right. So, you know, my, it's going to affect my average if I were going to look at my groupings, but I can go ahead and just hit one from the six, the six iron and nothing changes. So the radar doesn't really care about are you hitting a seven or a six, it just wants to know are you hitting a wedge, an iron, or wood. Great question. Okay, you want to take one more? Yeah, let's do one more and then we'll switch it over. Okay, this is interesting. percentage is for golfers to have a zero path and zero face? Can you help? Cool. Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a great question. I think zero path and zero face is attainable just like any other number. However, most tour players um, that, that I see and that I get to work with, there's, they always have some sort of pattern, you know, so for example, um, I'll, I'll speak on Bryson, I've worked a lot, of, a lot with him in the past several years, you know, he's typically, uh, he likes to draw the golf ball, so his path is out to the right, um, you know, face, face is tip obviously close to that so that you can draw it, but, but the biggest thing that I see with them is no matter what their path is, their face is always half, so the ball is always working back to the target, so, um, when he first came out, he did like to hit the ball pretty straight, 
but he's always had the tendency of drawing the golf ball, especially with the, with the driver. Um, so, you know, you could have a guy, for example, like Bryson, that might be six to seven right with a face that's three, or you might have a guy like Bubba who, who likes to cut it. Obviously, he likes to work the ball a little more. He can change that a little bit, but they're, they're not really too focused on zero, zero. They're more focused on, hey, can I, can I repeat the same numbers for the trajectory that I'm looking for? So, you know, that zero, zero, or what we call the unicorn, um, you can, you can definitely work to get there, but, uh, you know, most players like to see a, 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 a shape and they just work on dialing in that specific number, whether that's four right or five right, whatever the case may be. But great question. We'll take another one and we'll switch it over to, uh, we're going to go into FS skills. That's a great question. So the X2, uh, I can't remember now how many years it's been since I came out, um, but the X2 is only a radar. It does not have fusion tracking. So one of the reasons why we came out with fusion tracking was it, it was more around the wedges. So what would happen, and even though the X2 is actually still pretty good with this, but with radar only, you can have something called multipath. And what, what that is is basically disturbances that come off of the ground from the radar signal. So um, there's this, you know, in, in the air defense, there's people reference to something called flying under the radar. So it's kind of like when the, when the plane gets too low to the ground, they can still see where the plane is. They just can't pinpoint it. So it's hard for them to, you know, shoot it down or whatever the case may be. Um, so because of multipath, there's like signals that come off the ground. So with a wedge, when you're really hitting into the ground, you know, you have the ball, the club, the, the, the divot, you know, a lot of stuff going on, but the club and the ball are very similar in speed. So it's, it's almost like the radar starts to get a bit confused. What fusion tracking does for you is it cleans that. So it can, it, it basically says, it tells the radar, hey, you see the club here, this is precisely where it's at. So it just reflects finds that measurement. So with fusion tracking, you can literally be hitting 15, 20 yard shots and you're still going to get all your data parameters as you would with a full swing shot. That, I would say that is the biggest difference um, between uh, a radar that's non-fusion tracking versus the X3. All right, so we're going to go ahead, we're going to back out of VX and we're going to take you now to FS skills. I hope you guys are enjoying um, the stream. We really worked hard on, on making sure we had good audio and a nice visual for you guys um, and giving you some live information here. So in FS skills, everything on the setup is going to stay the same. I'm going to go into settings, just make sure I'm in indoor mode. I'm going to make sure that I have um, my, t, my T surface heights and everything set up. So we're in indoor. We got, uh, what do we do here? There we go. All right, so we're indoor. Uh, go, uh, go ahead and hit back. Back one more time. All right, go ahead and uh, there we go. All right, just getting connected. There we go. All right, go to settings, device settings. All right, so there's your modes that we talked about, short indoor, indoor. Um, outdoor. Some of you might ask what is long indoor for? That, that would be more of like a, the PGA show setup where we have like you know 50 or 60 uh, yards of ball flight you can put in the, in the long indoor mode. We got 96 feet for sensor to T. Uh, let's change that T surface height to one inch. We have our, our one inch mat here that we're going to be hitting off of. Alrighty and then let's go back and let's go ahead and go let's just go into um, skills assessment. So what's really interesting about skills is I see a lot of teachers that how they use it is when they first get a student that comes in they'll put them through a combine. Now you can go into a pre-built combine that we have or you can create your own combine. But let's go into flyscope combines real quick. I'll show you guys kind of what we're looking at. And then across the top here we have a bunch of, of, of combines. So let's say you wanted to play the scroll more left there's going to be a bunch in here. Maybe the, the wedge combine random distance. 
So if I select that, you can see there's 16 targets for this combine, and it's anywhere from 30 feet all the way to, I'm guessing about 100, I'm sorry, 30 yards to about 110 yards. So you can have a player go through this combine, and at the end, you're going to get a bar graph of how that player um, compares to the uh, proximity to the hole of the PJ Tour, so based on shot length. So once you have them there, it says, hey, you know, maybe they're a little weak in the 75 to 100 yard range. You can create a combine, a skills challenge specifically for that yardage band. So we're going to take you through how to do that. So let's back. And we're going to go to build a custom game. Now, what's interesting is a lot of our golf facilities that have X3, even some of our other products that connect to skills, is they'll do like a weekly challenge. So they'll do like a, they create one target for three shots and they do a 50-50 you know, pot or winner take all. And so the members come through, they're like, hey, I want to play the weekly challenge. It's 150 yards. The, the unit can be set up indoors or outdoors. And at the end of the week, whoever has the best score is the winner. So there's so many things you can do and get creative with, with this application. I'm gonna take you guys through how to create a target. So you can customize these targets. So first thing is you can select the number of targets. You can have 99 of them. You can put a mercy timer on it. So let's say I created a, you know, maybe it's 20 shot or 20 targets. I can change the timer on there so that the player is forced to do it within a certain time span, or you can just turn that off. Target mode is sequential or random. So sequential would be, you know, if I had three targets, 50, 100, and 150, I would hit all my 50s, then I'd hit all my 100s, and then I'd hit all my 150s. In the random mode, it would, I would hit 150, then I would hit another, the next one would be 100, and then I'd come back to 50, and then I'd have to go to 150. So it would just, the random is really neat because it's almost like actually playing um, on a golf course. So you can adjust altitude for those of you who are up in, you know, in the elevations, and then your terrain type, I usually just put it to medium. All right, so let's go medium. and we're gonna create targets. All right, so there's four targets we can create. We have a circular, then let's click on circular. We'll, we'll show them what a, uh, a radio looks like. So radio is more like if you're working on a specific target with as well as um, front and back or, or a layup. We have fairway grid carry and then fairway grid total. Fairway grid carry is you have to carry it a certain distance. So maybe you're, you're working on your driver and you want to say, hey, I, I want to at least carry it, let's say 250. You can put that in there. If you don't at least carry it 250, you don't get any points. Then if you do carry it 250, then it gives you points based on your left or right dispersion. And then fairway grid total just means you have to hit it, carry it, and roll it to that specific number. Let's go back to a circular target. Now on these circular targets, you have the black circle, which is five points, and then three, two, and one on the outer rings. Our distance, I have my seven iron here. Let's just set the target for 160 yards. Lateral offset, so I can offset the target left or right of the target line of the unit. So if I wanted this player to work on hitting cuts or hitting draws, you can offset the, the virtual target. You have the diameter of the entire circle, which is preset for you, and you can adjust that. You just click on the colors, and then you can change the distances or the widths up on the top, and then how many shots you want to hit. So let's just do three shots for this, for this example. And I'm going to go ahead and start the game. Now, you can save it for later. You can publish it. What that means is if you publish it, it goes live to myflyscope.com anyone in the world can play that challenge with you. And we'll just go ahead and play now. So, um, yep, you can have up to four players in this challenge. So 160 yards, I'll go ahead and, and hit three shots here for you. So a little left. Now for those of you, um, I can't remember the gentleman's name that asked about the show measure data, but you, you'll be able to see that now the trajectory is red. We probably have that on in the settings. All right, so I got five points there. If your volume is on your iPad and you have a data parameter selected, so let's say I have carry distance selected, 
Every time I hit the shot, the software is going to tell me it went 155 or 160, or you can select it to give you how many points you scored. So it is interactive. The application will speak to you. All right, so I got five points there. Let's hit another one. Got a hook. Now you guys notice that I'm positioning the ball a certain way. I'm just making sure that the dot is facing the target for a few reasons. One, I don't want to keep hitting it with my, wet, my, my club and having to replace the sticker. And two is when the dot is facing forward, the radar signal actually, the, the, the dielectric material that the ball is made with, it helps, the, the dot helps the radar see the the signal much clearer. So it's almost like a magnifying glass, and it, which is why we put it on the screen side. Um, so it, when the radar signal goes through the golf ball, it looks bigger on the other side. So that's, that's why you see me kind of positioning it. Now, do you have to position it that way? You don't have to, it's still gonna track, but for accurate spin measurements indoors, we always recommend that the dot is facing forward. There we go. A little left. All right, so I scored a total of nine points out of a possible 15. And now what will happen here is it gives me this graph. So as you can see on the bottom, I have all my yardage bands. If I click on my, on my bar, you're going to see that I have the PGA Tour mean distance of 27 feet 8 inches for that yardage band of 150 to 175 my mean distance was 40.1, so almost double, so probably why I'm not on tour. Um, so it's, it's just, it's a good, it's a good um, reference to know kind of where you stand with, you know, with the, the people at the show. All right, that's FS skills. I'm going to uh, change my setup here quickly. I'm gonna go into FS golf, um, and we'll take you through that application. Yeah, let's do some questions. Okay, question here from Scott. Can you explain the low point data parameter? Yeah, sure. So low point is, well, let's backtrack a little bit. So the flight scope, we, we track everything at what we call touch. So we report everything at what we call touch. So before there's any energy transfer from the club head to the ball, we believe that the moment you, you, tra you, the moment you touch the ball or you, transfer you, you hit the ball, you're transferring energy to the golf ball and you're changing the direction of the club head, especially on off-center hits. So we basically track right before touch. There's three data points that we track at what we call low point or the lowest point of the swing arc. That's horizontal vertical swing plane and the low point. And all the low point is, is how many inches plus or minus um, was the low point versus where touch happens. So for example, let's say that I'm hitting an angle of attack of four down, negative four, my low point is gonna be probably you know, plus three or four inches because it, it'll it's basically me basically telling me that when I hit the ball when I make contact with the ball because I was hitting four down on it the low point didn't happen till two or three three inches after that and that's what basically low point is so it's it's uh it's a number referenced off of angle of attack as well and that's what it is okay so FS golf now FS golf is used with the X3 as well as the Mevo Plus. However, with the X3, there is some different functionalities because obviously it has more capabilities, but we're gonna take you through the application, hit some shots, and then show you what it does, like we did with VX and Skills. So, let's go ahead and start a session. All right, same thing here. You have your different modes. Um, I have my setup and let's go ahead and start a new session. Now, you're gonna get this message if you're not connected to the internet, so if your iPad doesn't have cellular data, it's gonna say that there is no internet connection, it's the application is unable to pull from the local weather API. So we're just gonna go use standard sea level. 
And now we're in our session, we're ready to roll. Look and feel is similar to VX, it's, 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 it's um, a little fresher and newer. Uh, well, let's go to the back perspective or the down the line, and I'm going to hit some shots here for you so you guys can see how this one works. There's your, there's your two lines that you guys were talking about, show measured data as well as what's calculated. All right. See if I can hit one the other way. There we go. All right. So, bottom bar, very similar to VX. You can scroll it left or right. You can go up top four squares. Actually, before we go there, let's show them the different perspectives. So you have your, your perspective view, which is kind of like your 45. You have your back view. You have your side view, and then you're going to have your top view. You can go to all shots as well and see all of your trajectories. You can also go to grouping for that particular club. If you hit multiple clubs in the session, you can also go to all clubs and it'll show you that grouping screen. Let's go four squares. Dashboard. Same thing as VX. The only difference here is you're not going to tap to remove. All you can do here is you can go down to click on one of the data parameters. Now you can just grab them and move the order of the data parameters. Then you hit save and there you go. All right, we'll go four squares. And now if you guys give me one moment, I'm going to have a colleague of mine come in to hit a shot and I'm going to record him actually hitting um, a shot. And I'll show you guys how that video feature works. Yo, you got your club? Perfect. So my colleague Duncan's coming in here. Duncan played a little golf at uh, Columbus State University for Mark Immelman. So he's got a way better swing than I do. All right, Duncan, let's see it. Oh, yeah. All right, so the application is automatically going to clip that video for us. And it's going to put up six data parameters. I can pause that video. I can replay it back. I can also hit share and go directly to my social media accounts or I can text it or email it right from the application. So let's do one more. Oh, one more thing actually. Let's, let's, uh, let's take this back to maybe the top here. And if I wanted to, let's see, maybe I can do some lines. I can do some circles. I can erase them. So you have some features there. All right, now we're good to go. Let's do one more video, one more swing here. Great, awesome. So there you guys have it. That is the FS Golf app. Now, I'm going to quickly, thank you Duncan, I'm going to quickly, um, I'm going to go into um, one of our beta applications for FS Golf. I know a lot of you have probably seen um, some promotions on our new AR tracking or augmented reality tracking. I'm going to set it up and show you guys how that works. Um, so you, we're going to hit shots, show, uh, Duncan's going to come back in and I'm going to show you how this augmented reality will work indoors and outdoors, which basically gives you that broadcast feel that you guys can now use, whether you want it for your social media platforms or just for your own uh, personal use. Let me set that up and I will be back on screen.
All right. Okay, so you guys are going to see me go through some setup procedures here. So everything is the same here. I just want to show you. Okay, so here's our AR shot tracer. I'm going to do a little calibration. All right, Duncan, can you come on in here and take a few shots for us? There she goes. Now I can take this iPad. I am tethered to the to the uh, Surface Pro, and again, these this is this is in beta. But what you guys will see here is up oh, give me one second I'm just gonna scan the unit one more time but what you guys can see there is the live feed of the of the camera and then when the ball is hit and all those traces stay through there I can walk through the trajectory I can get any angle I want you'll see you'll see your ball speed as soon as it hits and then you'll see your your apex height and then your carry distance so I just wanted to give you guys a little preview of that and that'll do all right, let's take some questions and let's get set up for some simulation on E6. We got some questions there, Tyler. You can check it. Um, it shouldn't change um, because the the camera of the unit is on a mechanical. Uh, it's mechanically aligned, unless, for example, in the in one of the applications, you actually move it electronically. So you move the you know the 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 aim with the left or right keys. If you do that, then you should check it when you go into a different app. However, if you don't do that, if you're just using the mechanical zero, then you 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 would just stay there. Sorry, I'm here. So how long it takes between shots? Yeah, so he says, so instead of the next target immediately showing up, give it 15 seconds to check the stats. Okay, that, um, I don't think the application accounts for that right now. Um, however, what, you, what does happen is on the bottom, if you're in the same target, you can, you can scroll through the data before you hit the next shot. I do know what you're mentioning. If I now, it, let's say I hit all my hundreds and I go to my 150s, it automatically switches me to the 150s and I can't review what I did on the hundreds. I'll speak to the developers on that. I think there is a way to do it, but I'll, I'll get back. Let's make sure we write that down for him and, and we'll get back to him. And again, for those of you, if we don't get to your questions, we have all of these. If you ask them in the ask a question section, we have all of them archived with your information. We will make sure to reach out to everyone. Okay, so just in general, we're getting a lot of questions on what's available on the iPad or the iPhone versus PC, just software in general. Okay, so for the X3, what you have on the, on the iPad is you have VX, you have uh, FS Skill, so FS VX, you have FS Skills, FS Golf, FS Video, FS Short Game. On the phone, you have FS Golf, you can use FS Skills. Um, and then on, and that's those are the those are those versions. Android also has the same as I just mentioned. And then PC would be our PC version uh, 11, our video app, our short game app, and then E6 or the golf club or any simulation platform you have. Okay. Question here from David: What is the rec recommended device to show the data? For example, iPad Pro, iPhone, MacBook Pro. My my personal preference is the iPad Air. That's what I have. I've, I've used it for like two years now. 
Um, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the big, super big one. It is nice though. It shows you if, you know, if, especially if you're stationary in a studio or in a bay where you're not really moving with it much, the Pro is nice. The bigger one, the 13 incher. Um, but anything that's iOS 13 or newer, you, you're going to be good on. So um, obviously the newer, the better the graphics and stuff like that. But I have the iPad Air and, and it works great for me. Um, and then as far as the phone goes, I mean, as long as it's iOS 13 or newer. If you have the smaller, older phones, the images sometimes are, are hard to see, but I would say the iPad is definitely the way to go. And you guys can do what we've done here. So you guys have seen that we've been switching kind of feeds. All we have is we have our projector set up with an HDMI cable. Uh, when we're connected to the iPad, we have a lightning cable that goes from the iPad to the HDMI cable. And then if we need to go to our PC like we are now, then we just go into the PC or if we need to go into a different monitor. Now you can also do Apple TV. So if I had, I could set up an Apple TV to the projector if I didn't want any wires. And then I can just from my iPad, I can, I can screen share right to it. That connection sometimes you do have to have the newer iPads because it's obviously a wireless connection and it can get choppy. But um, we like the wire. We run our HDMI cables right to the lightning cable and you can do that to a TV. You don't have to do it to a projector. So maybe you just have your impact screen. You don't have a projector and you just want to be able to see the numbers. You can just set it up on your TV. Or for those of you who have um, a studio where you're hitting outdoors and you don't have a screen or a projector, just set up a couple TVs or set up a TV. You connect the iPad to that using an HDMI. So you can control your, your software, but when the player hits, they can just look up and see what you're talking about. I'd, I'd go VX just because of the capabilities of spe speed, and uh, speed and acceleration profiles. Um, if you're not really videoing, you can video in VX, but like I said, the, the capabilities on, on FS Golf and Video App are, are, are improved. Um, I like the VX for, for fitting just because of those profiles. I mean, they're, they're really, really key. I, I don't, once you start fitting with that acceleration profile, it's you almost don't want to fit without it. It's, it's really good. And, and for the fitter, it just gives you confirmation that what you're, the product you're putting the player in um, is what they need. So I, I would say VX. Now, I can say is that all we, our development team is working on merging everything. So instead of you having to go to all these different apps, you're going to go to one central location and then you're going to be able to do, you know, if you're going to fit or if you're going to teach or if you want to do skills or if you want to do simulation, whatever the case may be, it's one central location. All righty. So we have uh, E6 set up here. We're going to take you through a demonstration of E6, maybe play a few holes, and uh, we'll take some, uh, some more questions of whatever you guys might have. So he's going to set me up here. I probably need to grab a uh, scrap of wood here. Duncan, you want to hit these shots? I'll grab a five wood AVR first hole, hit a little cutter off the left side. All right, so this is a little dog leg right, uh, 339. It's going to give you some references on up or down, which uh, what the par is. It shows you the whole layout. You you know if you have wind or whatever the case may be, um, you'll see that all up on the screen. Uh, 339 to the hole. Cut a little bit. There we go. All right, so we got 124 yards. Same thing with E6. On the setup, there is two, just two differences. As far as the dot goes, everything stays the same. The only thing on E6 is I'm gonna have my radar eight feet to the ball uh, for full swing shots. And then for any like chips or putting, I'm gonna be seven feet. So what we do here in our studio at the moment, we have a, a one inch mat and then we have our putting mat to the right of it. So we take the unit and we align it right through the, the right edge of that mat. 
we hit all of our shots on the left side on the mat for full swing and then on the right side of that we hit our putts a foot back which would be seven feet to the to the radar so I got 124 yards here so I can hit a little draw in there oh boy that might be too long oh here we go why can I do that in a real life all right. Now, I uh, did want to mention some things. We are working on some vast improvements on E6 putting and simulation. Um, we, we have found some inter um, interface issues going on with, with the putting and chipping, so we will be uh, working on getting some of those improvements out. Uh, but just wanted to show you guys here how this works. So I've got a little 10-footer. Little Here we go. Get in the hole. Yo! That was, uh, that was a little slick. We, I think we set it to five feet gimme, so we'll do that. So there you guys have it. Thank you, go, thank you guys so much for joining us. If you have any questions on, uh, you wanna do some more questions? Okay, let's do a few more. Okay, question here from Chris. It seems very iOS specific. Are there any Android equivalents for all of that? Yes, um, VX, Android, FS Golf, Android. The only thing that is not Android specific is um, the PC solve software, obviously, and then um, the simulation with E6. E6 is only iOS or um, PC. Okay, question here from Ben. Does the FlightScope X3 do indoors and outdoors as a standard product? Yes. It comes with it out of the box. All of our units are indoor, outdoor. Uh, there's no additional fees or anything like that. Question here from Kyle. Why would a person use FS Golf versus FS Video? Okay, so, so FS Golf is going to give you the ability to um, see all your data parameters, bring in the video. It's, it's really more the FS Golf was more designed around the consumer, just someone who wanted to get some quick data with video. FS Video, however, gives you, the, gives you all the same capabilities, but you can just literally just drag and drop what screens you want to see. So split screen, three screens, four screens, whatever the case may be. All right, guys, I want to thank you again for your time. Um, hopefully all the technical stuff, the sounds and everything were good for you. You will get a recording of this once we're done. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach us at sales at flyscope.com. You can go to our website, flyscope.com. Um, if you're a PGA member, please reach out. We have some, some nice specials this week for uh, the PGA show for anyone. Um, just uh, give us a ring and we look forward to be able to